the only thing we receive freely kitu kitu kimoja tu ambacho tunakipokea bure is the grace of god ni neema ya mungu is the grace of god neema ya mungu the rest mengine yote that grace will enable us hiyo neema itwezeshe to pay a price kuweza kulipa gharama to pay a price kulipa gharama to pay a price kulipa gharama to kill this flesh kuweza ku 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 kufanya mwili huu tuitishe mwili to kill this flesh tuitishe huu mwili you know the desire of this flesh always is to re, to avoid to suffer unajua matamanio ya huu ama haja ya huu mwili kila siku ni ku, kukwepa mateso eh uh-huh, kukwepa kabisa so the desire of flesh always is to kwepa suffering you see ndivyo hivyo we 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 avoid suffering, we avoid pain. Tunakwepa mateso, tunakwepa maumivu. But that's what God wants us to put on the altar. Lakini hicho ndicho ambacho Mungu anatuhitaji sisi tukiweke madhabahuni. God is not asking you today to go and kill your son, your daughter. God is not going to sacrifice a human being. God wants you and me to sacrifice our flesh Mungu leo hii hakwambii nenda ukamuue mwanao kamchinje binti yako hapana Mungu huwa hatoi dhabihu za watu kufa ama watu kuuawa hapana Mungu anasema hivi nataka utiishe mwili wako Because the natural way of the flesh is to avoid suffering and pain Kwa hivyo kwa sababu haja ama njia za mwili huu wa damu na nyama ni kukwepa maumivu So God wants you to sacrifice that comfort zone. Kwa hivyo Mungu anataka uteketeze hiyo sehemu yako ya faraja and put it on the altar today. Na uiweke madhabahu madhabahuni leo. You want him more than the comfort zone? Je, unampenda yeye zaidi ya faraja yako? He will touch that area that gives you more comfort. Mungu atagusa hiyo sehemu ambayo inakupa faraja. And that was the comfort zone of Abraham. Na hiyo ndio ilikuwa faraja ya Ibrahim. His son Isaac that he loved the most. Mwanae Isaac ambaye alimpenda. And they started a journey. Na wakaanza safari. Of climbing that mountain. Wakaanza safari ya kuupanda ule mlima. Tell your neighbor it's time to climb a mountain of sacrifice. Ni muda wa kupanda mlima wa dhabihu. Hallelujah. Amina. He was old. Alikuwa babu. But he decided to climb that mountain. Lakini babu aliamua kupanda ule mlima. And when he saw that place at Moria. Na alipoona hiyo sehemu kwa mlima Moria. He asked the young men to remain behind. Akamwambia wale wale vijana wawili akamwambia bakini. He took his son. Akamshika mwanae. His only son. Wa pekee. And say let's go to that mountain and worship God. Akamwambia hebu tupande kwa mlima ule tu kumabudu Mungu. Listen to this. Hebu sikiliza hili. When we put a sacrifice on the altar. Unapoiweka dhabihu madhabahu It's a worship. Ni ibada. It's a sacrifice of worship. Ni adhabu ya ibada. It is costly. Ndio ina gharimu. But it brings the vapor. It make ascend the vapor to God. Lakini itatoa mvuke mvuke utakaokwenda kwa Mungu. Yani that boy ask him. Yule mtoto akamuuliza baba. Father. Baba. I see the wood. Kuni tunazo. I see the knife. Kisu tunacho. I see the fire. Moto upo. But where is the lamb? Lakini mwana kondoo yuko wapi? Just imagine as a parent. Ebu jiweke kwenye nafasi ya Ibrahimu kama mzazi wewe. Oh my God. Mungu wangu. But Abraham said. Ibrahimu akasema. God will provide. Mungu atajitolea. God will provide. Mungu atajitolea. He said at his mountain. Akasema mlimani kwake. God will provide. Mungu atajitolea. Tell your neighbor at his mountain Sama, God will provide. Mlimani kwake Mungu atajitolea. At his mountain. Mlimani kwake But we we want God to provide and yet we are in the valley. Lakini sisi tunataka Mungu awe mpaji ajitolee huku tumebaki bondeni. Lord have mercy. Mungu atusamee. It's difficult to climb a mountain. Ni vigumu kupanda mlima. But at that mountain we are climbing. Lakini mlima huo tunaupanda. God will provide. Mungu atajitolea. But if we remain in the comfort zone in the valley. Lakini tukibaki katika bonde sehemu ya faraja kwetu. That comfort zone. Sehemu yetu ya faraja. You may not see the lamb. Unaweza usimuone mwana kondoo. You may not get your miracle. Unaweza usiushike mujiza wako. The Bible says. Biblia imesema. Continue to sleep. Endelea kulala. Continue to sleep. Endelea kulala. Poverty will strike you. Umaskini utakupiga. Continue your comfort zone. Endelea katika sehemu yako faraja. 
But on the mountain of God, he will provide. When he reached the top of the mountain, he laid his altar. He put the fire on the altar. Then he bind his son. He meant it. He meant it. Though he knew that God is able to raise him up. He meant what he was doing. It's time to mean what we are saying. We need to pay the price of what we believe in. I pray that my voice will not be a voice in the wilderness. But sometimes you are preaching, you just feel that your message is in the wilderness. But even then, let someone hear. Let someone hear what the Lord is saying. He bind his son. He bind his son. He put him on the earth. And then he took the knife. Verse 10. Everyone has his verse 10 in life. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. While he was doing that, Oh, thank God for verse 11. But the angel of the Lord called him from heaven and said, Abraham, 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 so, so he said, here am I. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear me. For now I know that you fear God. For now I know that you fear God. For now I know that you fear God. Since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me, then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and there behind, behind him, there was a ram caught in the thickest by the horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Oh my God. Oh my God. Little did he know that when he was climbing that mountain, God in heaven was watching. The smell, the smell, the vapor was coming up. That smell of obedience was ascending to God. And as he was climbing, he didn't know on the other side. God caught a ram. The ram was also climbing on the other side. There is nothing that God will ask you to sacrifice that he himself will not pay back. Because he's your father. He's just testing you. He's testing you. Whatever he asks you to sacrifice, he will replenish it. If he asks you to give a fine sacrificial offering, he will give you back hundredfold. Press down, shaken together, running over. Hallelujah. Because he sees the vapor ascending. And when the vapor is ascending to God, he will open his treasuries. He will open his storehouse and blow his wind of blessing. And blow his wind of blessing. And blow his wind of blessing. See what he says. And, and, and Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to the day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time out of heaven and then said, 
Before we go there, you see, he said by faith, the Lord at his mountain, the Lord will provide. Sindio. Una... But when he saw the ram, verse 14, he concluded. Kabla hatuja kuenda hapo, kumbuka Ibrahimu kwa imani alisema kuwa mungu atajitolea mwanakondo. He said it by faith. Alisema hilo kwa imani. But when he saw the ram, lakini alipomuona kondo, he then called that place. Aka ita semu hiyo, the Lord will provide. Katika mlima wa buwana it, itapatikana. It means the Lord has provided. Mana yake ni Yehova hire, mungu anayajitolea. God confirmed his faith. Mungu ali, ali hakiki imani ya Ibrahimu. Ipoke hiyo kwa jina la isi. Receive that in Jesus name. Listen to 16 as God is blowing that wind of blessing. By myself, I have sown, says, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessings, I will bless you. And multiply, I will multiply your descendant. As the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendant shall possess the gate of their enemies Hebu sikiliza basi baada ya bwana Yesu kwa hii Give praise to Jesus akasema This is the blessing that is not yours it goes to your descendants Hii ndio baraka ambayo si ya kwako tu It's a covenant Baraka itakayodumu kwa wanao na watoto wanao that's the place whereby God will bless you and your descendants. Not only he will bless you, he will multiply you. Mungu atakubariki wewe na uzao wako. Si kubariki tu, atakuzidisha. Not only he will multiply you, he will make your descendants to possess the gate of their enemies. Na isi oh my toshi, God. Hata kuzidisha tu, lakini uzao wako utamiliki mlango wa adui zao. Yani kwa maana nyingine hakuna vita ambayo itasimama mbele yako na ikushindi. In other words there is no battle that shall come before you and you fail to overcome it. Because he has tested you. Kwa sababu amekupa mtihani. And he realized that you fear God. Na wewe umeonekana ya kuwa unamcha Mungu. To fear God. Kumcha Mungu. Is to submit to his will. Ni kunyenyekea kwa kusudi lake. Is to uh, is to put the altar ni is to build the altar and put the sacrifice na whatever sacrifice is asking you be ready to put it on the fire and when God sees your readiness he he, when he sees your readiness wako, then he swear over you basi yako. blessings ba, kama ni kubariki, Multiplication kama ni kuzidisha, and power over the gate of the enemy. Na kama ni malango ya zako. Am I talking in the wilderness? Je, nyikani, au? Did someone receive this word? Did you get it? Je, Did you say with David? Je, kama Dawuri, that I will not give to God something that does not cost ya me. Mungu the time has come Mudo whereby we are not taking our salvation lightly. Ambapo, wetu but we need to pay the price. Listen. Sikiliza. <laughs> you know we are in the end time. Unajua tunaishi katika nyakati za mwisho. The end season, the end of a season. Maj, yani mwisho wa majira haya. We may not believe but that's also what it is. Tunaweza tusiamini lakini ndivyo ilivyo. And the Bible says. Na maandiko yanasema. In those days. Nyakati hizo. In the end times. Siku hizo za mwisho. The love of many. Upendo wa wengi. Will go cold. Utakuwa baridi. Jamani. Utapoa. Some days back people used to love God. Siku za nyuma watu walimpenda Mungu ndugu zangu. Lakini hizi siku but nowadays iko mashakani. There is a doubt. Do we love God? Je, tunampenda Mungu kweli? Or do we love his blessings? Au tunapenda baraka zake tu? Do we love his face or do we love his hand? Je, tunapenda uso wake au tunapenda mkono wake? Do we love his face? Je, tunapenda uso wake? Or do we love his hand? Au tunapenda mkono wake? Tuko katika siku za mwisho. We are in the End times. Upendo wa wengi utapungua. The love of many shall grow cold. Imani ya wengi itapungua. The faith of many shall grow little. But let me tell you. 
If I'm not talking in the wilderness. kama God is speaking. Mungu ananena. It's time to pay the price. Ni muda wa kulipa karama. It's time to give God what is costly. Ni muda wa kumtolea Mungu kile ambacho kinagharimu. What is costly? Kile kinachogharimu. What is costly? Ni nini cha gharama kwako? The Holy Spirit knows what is costly to Roo me. Mtakatifu anakijua kile ambacho kwangu. He knows what is costly to me. Ni gharama. Kwangu ni cha gharama. God gives you a job. Mungu anakupa kazi. God gives you good health. Mungu anakupa afya nzuri. It's due time. Ni muda sasa. To catch the fire of God. Wa kuweza kukumbatia moto wa Mungu. It's due time. Muda ni sasa. To build your altar. Wa kujenga madhabahu yako. If the ta- alpha altar is on. Kama madhabahu yako inawaka moto. It is due time. Basi ni muda to put a sacrifice. Wa kuweka dhabihu hapo. Mshangilie Bwana. Give praise to Jesus. Am I talking to you? Je, nazungumza na wewe? God is not even allowed to swear but he will reach a level he swears over you. Hai Mungu haimpasi ku 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 kuapa. Lakini inafikia hatua anasema kama ni kuapa nitaapa. He is a faithful God. Ni Mungu mwaminifu. When he sees that vapor. Anapoona mvuke huo. When he sees that vapor ascending. Anapoona mvuke huo kipanda. He swears. If it's matters of blessings Ana hapa anasema kama ni kuhusu swala la kubariki nitakubariki. I will bless your descendants. Nitabariki uzao wako. I will multiply them. Nitawazidisha. This is someone who was able to bring to the altar his only begotten son. Now he's getting the promise of being a father indeed and father of nations. Like stars in heaven, like sand on the seashore. Huyu baba ni baba Endless ambaye blessings. alikuwa tayari kumleta mwanawe pekee madhabahuni amtekeze amteketeze kwa ajili ya Mungu Mungu anasema sasa hautakuwa tu baba wa mtoto mmoja utakuwa baba wa mataifa uzao wako utakuwa wengi kama vile nyota za angani Can oh. the angel say today that now I know you fear God Je malaika anaweza kusema kuwa sasa hivi ninajua ya kuona mcha Mungu and your descendants na uzao wako will possess the gate of their enemies utamiliki mlango wa adui zao what a blessing baraka ina gani let's see a second person hebu tuone mtu wa pili and this is solomon na huyu ni aye ni sulaimani in second chronicle chapter 1 verse 6 second chronicle 1 verse 6 read pastor and solomon went up tithe to the brazen altar before the lord It's When, all about an altar. Ni kuhusu madhabahu hapa. And Solomon went up tithe, tithe, to the brazen altar before the Lord, where, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. Sulaimani akaipandia huko madhabahu ya Shaba mbele za Bwana, iliyo kwako hemani pa kukutania akatoa sadaka elfu za kuteketezwa juu yake mm-hmm. in that night did god appear unto solomon and said unto him ask what i shall give thee usiku ule mungu akamtokea sulemani akamwambia omba utakalo nikupe listen to this sikiliza hilo the bible said that uh, king solomon The son of David was strengthened in his kingdom. And the Lord his God was with him and exalted him exceedingly. He was already blessed. He was powerful. But within himself He was not sure that he has reached the level of his father. He has seen how his father was fighting. He has known that it's not easy to be a king. Then he decided to go and seek the Lord. 
and he climbed the mountain as well. Akapanda mlima pia vile vile. Hallelujah. Amen. He sought the Lord. Alimtafuta Mungu. He wanted to hear from the Lord. Alitamani kusikia kutoka Mungu. And he put on the altar 1000 cows. Na aliweka kwenye madhabahu ngombe 1000. As a burnt offering to God. Kama dhabihu ya kuteketeza kwa Mungu. The vapor mvuke went up to god ukaenda juu kwa mungu tell your neighbor the vapor mwambie jirani yako mvuke the vapor mvuke the vapor mvuke the vapor mvuke went up to the lord ukapanda juu and god said na mungu akasema my son mwanangu what do you want wataka nini what do you want wataka nini i am not talking about blessings sizungumzi kuhusu vibaraka i am talking about a covenant of blessings nazungumzia kuhusu agano la baraka is way different Nitafauti. God said what do you want my son? Mungu akamwambia mwanangu ni nini unalotaka? And Solomon says. Solomon akasema, I am young. Mimi ni kijana. I am a king. Na ni mfalme. And you have put me to be the king over all these people. There are so many as sand like on the seashore. Na umenimarisha mimi kuwa mfalme juu ya hawa wote watu wengi kama vile mchanga wa ufakeni. So my request is that you give me wisdom. Kwa hivyo akasema ombi langu nipe hekima give me wisdom nipe hekima that i may be able to lead these people ili niweze kuwaongoza watu hawa haleluya haleluya amina am i in the wilderness je niko nyikani i say haleluya nasema haleluya so the lord was pleased with that answer kwa hivyo mungu akapendezwa na jibu la sulemani you say not only you did not you did not even ask me for blessings akasema Ujaniomba baraka. You ask me for wisdom. Umeniomba hekima. Now, sasa basi. I swear to give you wisdom. Na hapa nitakupa hekima. But I will also give you blessings. Lakini pia nitakubariki pamoja na hilo. Do we need a covenant of blessing? Je, tuahitaji kuingia katika agano la baraka? Do we need God to open the treasuries? Je, tuahitaji Mungu afungue hazina zake? Do we need God to open his storehouse? Je, kweli tuna haja ya kumuona Mungu and blow his wind of blessings over us? Galalake akivumisha upepo wa baraka zake. As an endless Wetu. covenant of blessing. Kama agano lisilo la kukoma la baraka let activate our altars acha basi tuchochee madhabahu zetu and be ready to sacrifice na tuwe tayari kutodhabihu never give to god something that does not cost you usiwahi kumtolea mungu kitu ambacho hakigharimu this is what cain did to god hiki ndicho ambacho kaini alikifanya mbele za mungu let's see a third person as we conclude tumuone mtu wa tatu tunapomalizia in the act of the apostles kitabu cha matendo mitume Hallelujah. Amen. Act of the Apostles. Matendo ya mitume. Chapter 10. Sura ya kumi. We see a Gentile man named Cornelius. Tunamwona mtu wa mataifa jina lake Cornelio. It's a hard message but it is really blessing my heart. Ni ujumbe mgumu lakini unabariki sana moyo wangu. And I pray that your heart will not be a heart of stone. Na naomba moyo wako usifanyike moyo wa jiwe. Because God is about to change your status. Kwa sababu Mungu punde anakwenda kubadilisha As you nafasia. grab the spirit behind this message. Unapokumbatia roho iliyo nyuma ya ujumbe huu. Yes, go ahead. Pastor. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius a centurion of the band called the Italian band palikuwa na mtu Kaisaria jina lake Cornelio akida wa kikosi kilichoitwa Kiitalia a devout man one that feared God with all his house which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always mtu mtaua mchaji wa Mungu yeye na nyumba yake yote naye alikuwa akiwapa watu sadaka nyingi na kumuomba Mungu daima He saw a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming in into him and saying unto him Cornelius akaona katika maono waziwazi kama saa tisa ya mchana malaika wa Mungu akimjia na kumwambia Cornelio and when he looked on him he was afraid and said what is it lord and he said unto him thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. Listen. Akamtazama sana akaogopa akasema kuna nini bwana? Akamwambia sala zako na sadaka zako zimefika juu 
na kuwa ukumbusho mbele za Mungu. Remember this man was a gentile. Kumbuka huyu mtu alikuwa mtu wa mataifa. At that time salvation did not reach the gentiles. Wakati huo wokovu ulikuwa hujawafikia mataifa. Though the promises of God were clear about it. Not very clear to some. Zilikuwa bayana lakini kwa wengine hazikuwa bayana vya kutosha. Remember Jesus when he left he said you go and preach the gospel to the people from Samaria, Judea and to the end of the earth. So he explained the plan of God was not to remain in Israel but it was to go beyond. It was an opening door to salvation to nations. Kwenda mbinguni akawaambia mtaihubiri njili hii kuanzia Yerusalemu, Samaria na Galilaya na miisho ya ulimwengu huu lakini ilikuwa bado So this man kwa hivyo mtu huyo had an altar alikuwa na madhabahu and and what he was burning on the altar the secret of Cornelius is always na, he was doing things always na kila alichokifanya madhabahu ni kwake siri yake ilikuwa ni moja siri ya Cornelius ilikuwa ni bila kikomo bila kukoma continuously Alifanya bila kukoma. Three things he was doing. Mambo matatu aliyafanya. He feared God. Alimcha Mungu. He was very generous and he was giving to people always. Alikuwa mkarimu akitoa sadaka nyingi kwa watu. And he was praying always. Na alikuwa akimuomba Mungu bila kukoma. Tell your neighbor that's an active altar. Mwambie jirani yako hiyo ni madhabahu hai. Hiyo ni madhabahu hai. He feared God though he was a gentile. Alimcha Mungu ingawaje alikuwa mataifa. He was a generous person he was giving to people until the giving went the vapor went up to God himself. Alikuwa mkarimu akitoa sadaka nyingi kwa watu hadi sadaka hizo zikafika mbele za Mungu. Continue giving. Endelea kutoa. Tell your neighbor continue giving. Mwambie jirani yako endelea kutoa. The vapor is ascending. Mvuke unapaa. The vapor is ascending. Mvuke unapaa. Oh hallelujah. Endelea kutoa bashe. It is ascending. Unapaa mvuke. People may not see it. Watu wanaweza sione. People may not value what you are doing. Watu wanaweza wasitamini. People may not bless you when you bless them. Watu wanaweza wasikubariki unapobariki. But just do it anyway. Lakini endelea kutoa bashe. Because is the vapor going? Kwa sababu ni mvuke unapaa. There is one in heaven. Kuna mtu mbinguni. There is one in heaven. Kuna mtu mbinguni. Who see your giving? Anayeona utoaji wako. One day. Siku moja. At 3 p.m. Satisa mchana. Vividly. Yaani kwa macho. He was not sleeping. Alikuwa hajalala. Vividly. Aliona kwa macho. God sent an angel in the house. Mungu akamtuma malaika nyumbani kwake. These things are not the things of the past. Haya mambo sio historia zamani. They are real. Ni kweli. Just imagine. Tazama. Ben you are in your house. Ben uko kwako. You are on the altar of prayer. Umekaa kwenye madhabahu unaomba. At 3 p.m. Satisa mchana. He was on the altar praying. Alikuwa madhabahu akiomba. You just not seen the spirit when you are eating ugali, you are enjoying, you are in the comfort zone. He was in the realm of the spirit. Unajua ukitaka kuona rohoni sio kila saa umekaa mezani unakula ugali, unakula maharage. Ha, kula ugali sio mbaya. <laughs> kula ugali sio mbaya. He was in the spirit. Huyu bwana alikuwa akiomba. He was on the altar of prayer. Alikuwa madhabahuni kwenye maombi. At 3 p.m. Satisa mchana. Vividly. Macho bayana from heaven. Kutoka mbinguni. God send an angel. Mungu akamtuma malaika. The angel will locate your house. Malaika atapata nyumba yako. The angel will locate your house. Atajua anwani ya nyumba yako. I may not know your address. Naweza nisijue anwani yako. But there is a God in heaven. Lakini kuna Mungu mbinguni. He knows your address. Anajua naishi wako. He will send the angel. Atamtuma malaika. The angel will locate your place. Malaika atakuja kwako. And vividly. Maono ya mchana. He saw an angel. Akamuona malaika. And listen what the angel said. Nasikiliza kile ambacho malaika alisema. Oh hallelujah. Amina. He saw clearly in a vision an angel of God coming and saying to him Imagine <laughs> akamtazama sana akaogopa alimuona malaika wa Mungu na malaika akamwambia neno It's one thing to see the angel Ni jambo moja kumuona malaika And another thing to see an angel saying Apostle Tris Na ni jambo lengine malaika kuambia mtume Tris Oh Pastor Ben mchungaji Ben Oh Pastor Ine mchungaji Ine Oh whoever here wewe you be like who oh. utasema ala He knows me by my name. Ananijua kwa jina langu. 
Let it happen jamani one day in your life. Acha itokee angalau siku moja mashaimu. Oh my god. Mungu wangu. That the angel of God will locate your house. Yakuwa malaika wa Mungu aje unakoishi. And call you by your name. Na akuite kwa jina lako. Eh. Hey. And then he said. Na akasema. And when he observed him, he was afraid and said, "What is What is it, Lord?" Akaogopa. So he said to him, "Akasema, kuna nini bwana?" Your prayers. Akamwambia and your arms sala zako have come up for a memorable before na god na zako zimefika juu na kuwa ukumbusho mbele za mungu oh hallelujah hallelujah keep on activating your altar endelea kuchochea madhabahu yako let the fire burn continue acha moto uendelee kuwaka the fire of prayer madhabahu moto the wa fire of giving maombi moto wa Utoaji. The fear of the Lord continuously. Acha kicho cha Bwana kiendelee. Submission and obedience. Uti na unyekevu. Let that vapor. Acha mvuke huo uendelee kupaa. There is a God in heaven. Kuna Mungu mbinguni. He will send an angel. Atamtuma malaika. He will locate you. Malaika anaijua. He will call you by your name. Atakuita kwa jina. He say your prayers. Anasema sala zako. And your sacrifices. Na sadaka zako has pleased god zimempendeza mungu now send a man to jopa sasa mtu tuma watu waende jopa kule haleluya amina send them to jopa and same for simeon whose son name is peter sasa basi peleka watu yafa ukamwite simoni aitwaye petro haleluya amina you see tazama what we are doing tunachokifanya sisi is only what we see by faith ni kila ambacho tunakiona kwa imani and we obey by faith na kutii kwa imani but on the other side lakini upande mwingine ule god is doing something mungu anafanya kitu so when i compare this act 10 of cornelius and genesis 22 i see the same same scenario kwa hivyo ninapoangalia matendo ya mitume 10 na kulinganisha na mwanzo 22 Mbona naona mambo yale yale? Abraham is climbing a mountain. Ibrahimu anapanda mlima without knowing what is on the other side. Basipo kujua kilicho pande mwingine ule. On the other side Cornelius fears God. Huko nako Cornelio anamsikia Mungu. As God fear as Abraham feared God. Anamcha Mungu jinsi ambavyo Ibrahimu alimcha Mungu. Because you remember the angel told Abraham, now I know that you fear God. Kwa sababu kumbuka alichomwambia Ibrahimu, malaika alisema, sasa najua unamcha Mungu. And this vision is calling us to fear the Lord. Na maono haya yanatuita sisi kumcha Mungu. So now this man who was a gentle fears the Lord. Sasa mtu huyu ambaye alikuwa ni akida wa mataifa. We who are born again are we fearing God? Anamcha Mungu. Je, sisi ambao tumeokoka kweli tunamcha Mungu? He feared God on his altar. Alimcha Mungu madhabahu yake. He was sacrificing prayer. Alitoa dhabihu, dhabihu ya sala. And he was a great giver. Na alikuwa mtoaji mkuu. On the other side. Upande mwingine ule. God is preparing salvation. Mungu anaandaa wokovu. God is preparing Peter. Mungu anamwandaa Petro. Just the way God was bringing the ram on the other side. Jinsi wakati ule mwingine Mungu alikuwa akimleta mwana kondoo. When your vapor is going up to God. Mvuke wako unapopaa kwenda kwa Mungu. Don't ask yourself what will happen. Usijiulize nini kitatokea sasa. How will it happen? Itatokeaje? Just believe. Endelea kuamini. That as you are burning. Ya kuwa unapoendelea kutekeleza on your altar God himself knows how he will orchestrate things See another person who was on the altar of 3 pm Peter went in the upper room Peter Petro naye alikuwa na kwenye chumba cha juu at his place siku ile sehemu kule jopa and then he had a vision akaona maono He had a vision. Akaona maono. And God brought na Mungu akaleta all sorts of animals. Kila aina ya wanyama. And clean animals. Wale wachafu. Wa and God say eat. Wale najisi na Mungu akasema kula. Peter says. Petro akasema. I can't eat this Lord. Siwezi kula. Because it is unclean. I Kwa never eaten this. Kwa sababu ni najisi. Sijawahi kula God kama says, hiki. Don't call what I have I've sanctified. Don't call what I have sanctified. Uh, unclean Mungu akamwambia usiite kila ambacho ni usiite kila ambacho nimekitakasa ukakiita najisi Three times mara tatu He said what is this Akasema nini hii He went down Akashuka When he went down to his thinking room Aliposhuka 
he found messengers of Cornelius. They told him. So he went. You see those connections. Are you able to see those connections? People who did not know each other. Because the vapor were going up. God brought them together. God is going to open doors for you. Of people that you don't even know. People that don't have the same skin with you. Not even the same background with you. And God will bring them to your place. God will bring them to your place. Am I talking to someone? Or am I just preaching in the wilderness? You are watching around. Who will be my source of blessing? Apana. Let the vapor go up. Let the vapor go up. Let the vapor rise. Leave it to God. And in his own way, he'll bring it. <laughs> the Bible says that those rams, they were caught up in and, their horns. Yes. The and, ram was caught up in the horns. And God said that the vapor will rise. God will get hold when of the kichaka. person. The person with the source of your blessing. God will get hold of him. Wait, what does it mean? Man, no one is able to bless unless God touches. It means God will touch people for you. He will touch people for you. Why? Because you are vapor. Do this. Because the vapor. Do this. Is ascending. The vapor is ascending. God will catch somebody. <laughs> touch his heart. To bless you. God. Mungu. Caught up Peter. Alimnasa Petro. And send him to Cornelius. Na and when he entered that place, Cornelius have prepared people, Cornelio neighbors, his own family. They were waiting for an apostle. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. God Mungu. is the God. He is the God of all flesh. Don't put boundaries for God. Don't limit him. He's the, he's the Lord God for the whole earth. Unatia macho kwenye mti moja. Haujue kama bustani ya Eden ina miti mingi sana. You are focusing only on one tree, not knowing that the Garden of Eden has so many other trees. Ambia mwenzako usimukatie Mungu mipaka. Tell your neighbor, do not put boundaries for God. Acha tu. All you have to do, let your vapor rise. Let the fire burn Acha moto wake. on the altar. Mother Bauni. Let the sacrifice be put Acha on the altar. Mother Bau yako iwe na let the vapor of good smell go ahead. Acha let it ascend. Ya mvuke wako God will come mungu. down for you. Mungu kwa he yako. will touch somebody for Ata you. Kwa yako. Hallelujah. Amina. Hallelujah. Amina. He will blow the wind Na from his storehouse kutoka gala lake. because he hear the smell, the good smell. Kwa na Tell Manuka your neighbor mazuri. sacrifice of praise. Yako, ya sifa. Sacrifice of prayer. Sacrifice of fasting. Sacrifice of giving. Financial sacrifices. Oh, hallelujah. He is a God of sacrifice. When I see Genesis 22, I also think of Matthew 26. I also think of Matthew 26. I also think of Matthew 26. Matthew 26. It's a book you should not forget. 
It's a chapter you should not forget. Matthew 26 is when Jesus himself was laying the sacrifice on his altar. Verse 39, Jesus says, Oh my father, do, do not let me drink this cup. Take this cup away from me. Three times. Then he understood. This cup is to be drunk. He said, Lord, not my will, but your will. So he laid his will. He laid his will on the altar. I was ready to suffer to become the priest. Indeed, he drank the cup of suffering. Let's all stand up. Today is a D-Day that God is speaking to you to build your own altar, to put the fire on it, on the dry wood, and lay lay down on the altar your will and embrace the will of God. I guarantee you this is not a comfort zone. But let the vapor goes up to the altar of God. Time to yeah. enjoy Muda waku recreation. Mstare. We say recreation mm. time. Uh -huh. Mapumziko. Mm. Recreation time is over. Muda wa mapumziko umekusha. It's time to build an altar. Ni muda waku jenga madabao. In your salvation. Katika wakovu wako. Put wood on it. Eka kuni. And lay down your comfort zone. Alafu ulaze. And let the vapor of God ascend. Then he will open his storehouse and blow the wind of blessings and make a covenant of blessings with you. If this word is yours, if you heard, and if I was not speaking in the wilderness, let someone raise his hand and say, God, here I am. I have heard your voice. I will never give you something that does not cost me again. I need to see my vapor going up. And I know you shall catch a ram for me. For me. For me. For me. You orchestrated city, you will orchestrate situations. And you are going to swear a blessing over me in due time. And you are going to manifest yourself. Same way you did to Abraham. You swear blessings over him and multiplication and power over the gate of the enemy. Same ways you came up and offered wisdom as never before and blessings to Solomon. Till today no one is blessed like Solomon because you stretch the treasuries and blew the wind of blessings and blew the wind of wisdom and then you blew the wind in the house of Cornelius. Those who were called Gentiles. Then you blew your wind. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. 
and they spoke in new tongues even before they were baptized my God, my God touch your people touch me O Lord touch me O Lord touch your church O Lord these are the things you want to reach we need to reach this level of living in covenant with you. Start speaking in tongues. If this word is yours, make your own decision. Not to give to God. Not to give to God things that are not costly. My God, my God, my God, my God. My God, my God, my God, Mungu my wangu. God. God is telling you. Mungu wangu. Stop resisting the word of God. Mungu anasema acha kupinga neno la Mungu. That comes from the altar of God. Ambalo latoka kwenye madhabahu ya Mungu. Stop resisting. Acha kupinga. What the spirit of God is saying on the altar. Kile ambacho roho wa Mungu anakisema madhabahuni. Lay it on the altar of God. Hebu kiweke madhabahuni mwa Mungu. We 